Your dog's ears are the cutest little things, but they could be housing ear mites. So what even are ear mites and what can you do about them? Let's bark about it. Welcome back to Alpha Paw, your destination for everything dog. I'm Bernie Zilio, and I'm on a mission to answer every doggone question you have ever had about your fur babies. And today we are talking about ear mites in our dogs and puppies and what the heck to do about them. Thankfully, we have an expert with us today, Dr. Ross Bernstein. Dr. Ross is a seasoned veterinary professional and pet care expert. He earned his doctorate degree in veterinary medicine at UC Davis School of Veterinary Medicine, and his work has been featured in several industry-leading publications, including the Journal of Veterinary Surgery. He's our go-to vet for everything we want and need to know about our fur babies. So welcome back to Alpha Paw, Dr. Ross. Hey, Bernie. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Thank you so much for being here. Good. Thanks for having me. Okay. So today's topic, ear mites. Now, before we get into like the signs, the symptoms, the treatment, all of that good stuff, what even are ear mites? Mites in general are little arachnids. Arachnids meaning they have eight legs. So they Ooh, are related. I don't like this at all. <laughs> they are related to spiders. So they have eight legs and they are microscopic, meaning you can't see them with the naked eye and they can infest your dogs or your pets or you for that matter. So um, yeah, th those are what mites are. So you're telling me that ear mites are spider-like creatures that can potentially infest my dog's ears. They are in the same family as spiders, but they're not spiders. It's like they're a different kind of arachnid. But yeah, they can go on your dog's skin. They could go in their nose. They're nasal mites. When we say they can cause an infection on the outside of the body. We say it's an infestation rather than an infection. But uh, but yeah, they can cause an uh, they they can go in their ears and they can get ear mites. Okay, this is disgusting. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a bunch of different kinds of mites too. Some of which can be, go between species, like from your dog and to people, and some and there's different kinds that go on your dog's skin and different parts of their skin too. Okay, so that's horrifying. Um, but I guess, because I've heard this, um, like ear mites, I've heard it, but I didn't actually know what it was. So this is kind of terrifying and gross. They're but actually how... super cool if you've ever seen them under the microscope, because, you know, <laughs> sometimes they're, they're actually moving. When you do your skin scrape or whatever test you're doing when you're suspecting mites, you do your test, you look at it under the microscope, and there are these little transparent bodies with legs and they're like swimming in the under the microscope it's actually really cool and you can see all their internal organs that's that's great for you <laughs> i'm so happy that you love ear mites um and it does sound cool in like a scientific way but um we obviously don't want these in our dogs so how do they get there in the first place? Like, is it super common? Ear mites in dogs are very rare to start off with. In clinical practice, I have, I'm going to be honest, I have never seen a case. They are something that we do learn about in the textbook, but I have never seen a case. In some other species like cats and shelter cats, it's not that uncommon that you'll see some cats in the shelter coming off the street that, that have ear mites. Uh, but what it, where they get it is they're living in dirty conditions where they don't have good hygiene they're in contact with other dogs because they they can get them from other places they can basically if they're living outside and not being taken care of that's usually how they would get it when they start showing clinical signs of having the ear mites they're going to have a ton of waxy debris build up of gunk in their ears they're going to be very itchy so shaking their head, flapping their ears, scratching. They'll probably usually have a lot of excoriation marks around their ears, and they might even have an additional secondary infection from all the self-trauma that they're doing to because they're in so much discomfort. So those are some of the signs that, that you might see. Okay, wow. So it's probably fairly obvious to know if your dog has ear mites, but a lot of these um, signs 
sound very similar to just like a regular ear infection. So what's like the difference between having like your dog having ear mites and your dog having just like a normal ear infection? The signs would actually be very, very similar. And that's why a test called an ear cytology, where you take a swab or a cotton tip applicator and get a sample of from, from inside the ear and look at it under the microscope. So the signs are, are very similar uh, as in, as to a I'm not going to say a normal ear infection, but an ear infection due to yeast or bacteria, they're going to present a very similar way uh, as, as ear mites. So that's why doing that ear cytology test to determine which type of infection it is, is going to be very important so that you know how to appropriately treat it. Got it. I'm glad you mentioned treating it because that was my next question. Um, what are some treatment options for our dogs if they have ear mites? Well, first you want to clean out the ears and treat any secondary infection. So cleaning out the ears, getting all rid of all that gunk, but then you want to put them on in on a medication that kills the mites. So most, no, I'm not probably not most, but there's a lot of flea and tick preventatives that also have action against mites these days. So a lot of them like Nexgard, Brevecto, Sir, uh, Simpirica, Anything with ivermectin in it, that's going to kill the mites. So a lot of the monthly free flea preventatives out there, those, th those will be good against the mites. So fortunately, there are a lot of treatment options. Good. I'm so happy to hear that because I am not necessarily super fond of the thought that my dog could have, you know, like spiders in his ears. I know they're not spiders, but... <laughs> It sounds like spiders. Um, but anyway, thank you so much, Dr. Ross. I know that you say a lot of things that scare myself and a lot of our pet viewers, our pet parent viewers, but I know that it's important to know certain conditions or things that can happen to our dogs so that we can continue to keep them happy, healthy, and safe. So if you guys have any more questions for Dr. Ross or myself, go ahead and drop them down in the comment section below. Again, I'm Bernie Zilio, and this is Alpha Paw. Be sure you subscribe to our channel so you don't miss one single doggone episode. We'll see you next time.